All right. Hey, you guys, who's that other little dude in the corner? <laughs> She's not supposed to be there. Anyway, I'm so excited to be doing this with you guys. I uh, We should have done this a long time ago. We're going to be critiquing, and um, I'm going to give you the biggest secret or the biggest mistake, however you want to look at it. But uh, let's do this first. Let's get our... Uh, mention here. I'm Mark Silver, if you don't know who I am by now. And I am a photographer and author here in Carmel, California. And our show today is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo. We've mentioned this, but you can get all sorts of prints made, including wood prints. I'm going to try one of these. I think that looks really cool. You know, they've you, you click on the link here. Jared will put the link in there. Um, Try them out, and you're also going to get 25% off in your first order, or whatever you get. Listen, you guys, if you haven't heard the message from Dan and I and Bob and everybody else on this show, you got to make prints. Get off your digital and into the print world. It's so different holding a print in your hands, even if it's a print on wood, okay? Make something. All right, so listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, first of all, I'm going to give you the biggest secret of photography. Listen up, big ears, biggest secret and the biggest mistake that I've ever made as a photographer. I'm going to let that rattle around in your mind for a second. What do you think I'm going to tell you? That I didn't buy a 500 mil lens or I didn't have the right filter on my, you know, or... I didn't learn some Photoshop secret a long time ago. Or absolutely wrong. None of those things. It's one really simple thing, and I think we've all made this mistake. And here it is. I'm going to show you, rather than tell you, I'm going to first show you what I mean here. Now, this is a book of Annie Leibovitz. A Photographer's Life, and it's her photographs from 1990 to 2005. Annie Leibowitz and I went to the San Francisco Art Institute together. I know how she started, and then she went from there to Rolling Stone and has had an, an amazing career as a photographer. But this book contains all her photographs. Now, I'm just going to show you. This is uh, a photograph of her life companion. Um, this is a photograph of her parents. One of She mentioned somewhere her favorite photograph of all her photographs. And if you look at her work, it's pretty amazing. But her fav favorite photograph is the one of her mom, which looks very similar. This is her mom and dad. Looks very similar to this. It's just her mom. Okay, I'm giving you an idea here and see if you can catch what I'm looking at. This is... Uh, this is a photograph of her parents renewing their marriage vows. Maybe the light is starting to dawn on you guys. This is a photograph of her parents sleeping with her daughter. With their grandson, maybe not her daughter. Okay, it was their grandson. Okay, another a grandson. Parents sleeping with their grandson. This is a photograph of her um, her nieces. Now, what do we have in common here? These are not her celebrity photographs. These are her everyday photographs of people around her. And I think the biggest mistake I've ever made is I didn't photograph enough. I didn't photograph those everyday events the way I should have. I missed so many photographs. I it it kind of breaks my heart. I mean, people I've known that I I've never you know I may not see again, or I they are gone. I can't see them again. Why wasn't I photographing everything that happened to me in my life? And Annie Leibovitz is so prolific with her camera. She photographed many things I would never, ever, ever photograph. I, I, I'm just going to tell you. They're very intimate moments. I, I wouldn't have a camera there. Um, but she did. And somewhere between 
you know, like thinking, oh, these are not really important because they're just everyday things. That's the biggest mistake. It's not observing the obvious right in front of us. Those moments are going to last forever if you photograph them. And if you don't, they're gone forever. So let's let's learn from this. I mean, I can't tell you how I'll, I'll give you one. Just one example. I went to a and I posted this recently on Instagram. Jared, maybe you could bring this up while I'm rambling here. Um, it was of the rock concert that occurred shortly after Woodstock. And I put it on Instagram. I took my roll of flex. Do you know which one I'm talking about? You can probably find it. Um, I took my Rolleiflex to this very small rock concert called the Big Sur Folk Festival, and I photographed a lot. And um, it was it was a few weeks after a, a Woodstock happened, so it had some of the same bands. It had Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and it had uh, you know Joan Baez was there. A number of people who had just been to Woodstock came to this. Are you able to find that, or is that? Anyway, uh, yeah, the Big Star Folk Festival. Yeah. Why don't you put it on the screen there? It's, there it is. Okay. So this was taken with my Roloflex, and I did document this um, festival. But I went to lots of other rock and roll events, never took a camera. Why? Why did I just carry my camera with me everywhere? Why did I select this one event? Why didn't I photograph every friend I ever had? guys and girlfriends and and my kids every moment when they were growing up i mean it's just ah <laughs> so don't make that mistake photograph the obvious don't let those moments go by it's the biggest message in photography that i could give you okay all right let's dive into critiquing so jared um bring up that critique document there we go this is something I wrote. It's out of my book, Advancing Your Photography. Uh, why do we have this over here like that instead of me? Well, let's just put me in there. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, hang on a sec. The fun Technical. of a live stream. Technical difficulties. So let's go here. There we go. All right. So this is called On Point Critiques, and it's basically how I believe critique should be done. Go down to the next page. I'm not going to read it over with you, but it's my story about getting critique. So the first thing that you should do is there's a very specific sequence to critiquing that I think is really important. Um, you want to be specific and you want to be constructive in your critiques. Okay, the worst thing that can happen, and I had this happen in art school, is just to be chopped up. And in art school, one of the things I... I learned is if you were in if if you were in the favor of the teacher you got a great critique if he didn't li like or agree with your work you got a really bad critique or sometimes none at all this is not cool <laughs> it's not it's not helpful and if I could come away with only one thing that I learned from that is to be, be able to not listen to somebody's negative critique and throw it out the window but there's really two things that it comes down to. One, lead with something constructive no matter what. Always find something constructive as your first comment. And second of all, if you do feel a change is needed, point out only one thing. And one thing only that you feel could be changed. Because if you give people 10 things, hey, you know, I would crop it this way and I would have used this different lens. It's just confusing. And it's it's not constructive. Give them one point and one point only. Okay, that's our. Those are our rules within AYP. Now listen. Beyond that, it doesn't have to be. Oh wow, two thumbs up. Everything's groovy. You know, you did the best. Like that isn't helpful either. You know, if you see something that resonates with you, tell them what it is. But don't just make it like another you know, thumbs up, oh, wow, awesome photo, you know, that really doesn't help the photographer, like, tell them why it resonated, okay? And if you see something that doesn't work, tell them what it is. You don't have to chop them into little tiny pieces in the process. In fact, you shouldn't. But just what do you, what do you see? Okay, 
Now we are going to critique, and this is what's known as a blind critique. I've never, you know, I haven't like ingested these photographs. Jared's going to bring them up and I'm going to tell you what I see. So Jared, without further ado, tell us what we've got, who these brave souls are and any yeah, comments. Yeah, so we have a lot of images, so we're probably not going to be able to get to everybody today. Uh, but if you're watching this, um, you know, we'll, we're going to do more of these shows and I'm going to yeah. keep your photos on, uh, on file. And also if you're in the chat, be sure to talk. Uh, if you have yes. submitted your photo, let us know because, if you're here. Cause uh, we want to make sure we're favoring those who showed up. Yep. And we will get to other people as well, but, uh, especially if your username, um, is not the same as your, you know, your name on yeah, Facebook. Good point. Uh, if you just put your first name, that should be enough for me to know because I don't think we have too many people with the same first name. Um, you know, because I don't know who uh, uh, Tangy Orange is, uh, just as an example. Okay. Um, Tangy Orange. So I, I don't know if you've submitted a photo or not. If you have, though, please let us know because we want to show off your photos. Okay, so, Lyle and... Uh, and oh, Rachel so, yeah, and Ta have, now we know who Tangy Orange is. It's Jack. And they have submitted a photo, so and why then don't we've we got go Cindy. Okay, you guys are gonna get first there. dibs here. Okay, All right. bring one up. So, Let's fire away here. Okay, that's pretty cool. And that's I'll Ruby read the description thought. that was submitted with this. So, uh, hi, I'm a 18 year old photographer from Illinois. My dream would be to open a wet plate studio of wow. my own. I wow. uh, started photography two years ago and still trying to figure out their what photography style they want to focus on. Um, so they uh, submitted a couple of different photos. And this was one that really caught my eye because, you know, it's really I different. And so... Hey, don't worry yeah, about trying to figure photo. out your style. I'm still trying to figure it out. And I've been photographing since I was 12. Okay, so it's a lifelong process of figuring it out. And, you know, I, going back to Annie Leibovitz, she's known for her portraiture. And she, but at some point, she actually took a class with Ansel Adams in Yosemite, and she, she really wanted to get into landscape photography. And you could see her desire to do that. And qu I'm, I'm going to be straight with you. Her landscapes are not very magical. You know, that's not her her thing, but she she just wants to move into that world, and so she did. Okay, so who who is this, Jared? Who did this? I want to be able to address you by name. Um, this was Jack. Jack. Jack, I love it. It's very experimental, and uh, that is a cool thing. It looks like you projected onto your subject here. I don't have any, uh, anything negative to say. I don't have anything I'd point out to you at all. I think your experimenting is is to be encouraged and applauded. And bravo. I I think you got something there and <laughs> keep doing it. So that's my that's my blind critique. Well done. Yeah, uh, I I think it's fun to see some of the more experimental photos, uh, and that's why I definitely pulled uh, that one out because it was just so interesting. All right, well, let's keep moving because we got a lot of ground to cover here. But again, uh, Jack, keep 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 it up. Eighteen years old, you're on the right track. You really are. Yeah, keep submitting to AYP Club as I'll well. I'll say, say one last thing here. This re this really is a, for me a throwback to the '60s, and um, mm -hmm. although it's different. It's something that we might have seen in the 60s, and that's that's a cool thing, you know. There's, I'm a 60s guy. It's not it's not really just that it's a throwback to the 60s. I just like I like your willingness to try something that isn't in the in the kind of the current norm. I think that's great. All right, who's next? Um, and just so people know, we're I'm only right now taking one photo from each person, but yeah, like fine. I said. We will do more shows. Well, let's so keep it going. So only one photo per person for yeah. right now. Uh, yeah. This one is from Cindy, and I think the last name is pronounced uh, Nabakin. Uh, I'm I am terrible with pronunciation of names. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm giving it my best. 
uh, effort on that one, but I saw that you're here in the chat, so... All right. Uh, so I let's... don't believe this one had anything submitted with it. I think it was just the photo. Okay, so here's the... Here's, I, love the I love the reflections. I really think that's awesome. And um, that, to me, is, the, is the, the biggest feature of this image. My critique is this. I don't know where my eye should go. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but it's missing one thing, which Bob Holmes calls a punctuation point. Uh, th there should be one point where my eye is drawn to. Now, listen, in the foreground, the um, reflections are awesome because it's like, wow, that's like my eye is drawn to that. But then in the background, I don't know where to look. Um if you had something in that image, whether it was an animal crossing that stream or a person or a bird or anything that would be like, ah, you see what it, what's happening is my eye gets drawn. I get like, wow, excited. And then I don't know where to go from there. So that's a question of being patient. You know, you came across something really cool here with that reflection, and maybe you had to wait an hour. Maybe you had to wait a half a day. <laughs> or maybe you had to just arrange to, and there's nothing wrong with this, to have somebody walking across that stream, to give it a punctuation point. That would have made it a bang up, amazing photograph. So you've got it, you've got the stage set. The next thing is, what do I want on that stage? What what could make that thing pop? Okay, so if you have this in your environment, which I'm maybe guessing that you do, go back there, wait it, wait it out, be patient, wait for something to cross that stream that will give it a punctuation point. Okay, and then you'll have, and if please, if you are near that spot, will you please do that? And that goes for, any of these critiques, please come back and show us that next version. Okay. All right, Jared, let's keep her moving. We got a lot of ground. All right. Covered. We got Lyle Robinson's photo next. Okay. So, and let me check to see if they had, uh, no, no, uh, particular comments for this one. So, all right. So, okay. Here's, here's a leading line drawing my eye. And I like this photograph drawing my eye you know, which is what a leading line does, and it's the dotted line. Now, okay, again, I don't have a punctuation point. I have a part of a punctuation point. What could have happened, what unfortunately, the where my eye is drawn is to the car on the left, somewhat on the car on the right, not to the guy walking. So somehow, compositionally, it's a little confusing because... I'm drawn to the car, but I really think I should be watching the guy walking. So we're, we're doing what's called a split attention, which is something you want to try to avoid. You can do it on purpose. And we had an example with Deanne Fitzmaurice doing this, uh, where we had, I don't know if you remember it, but there was an image in the barber shop, and we had three photographs within one. That's, an, that's a technique. But this one doesn't quite work because it's not really three separate photographs. It's one photograph. So what I would like to see here is my eye being drawn to the guy because I really feel like that must be where I should be looking. Now, the only way that probably would work is if you moved over across, you know, to the left. I, I'm up where that little hill thing is, where it goes off the path, and somehow maybe got in closer to him. So he was the feature of that leading line. Now, in that case, the leading line would have been the path leading to him. But I would just follow that guy until he did something interesting, some kind of gesture. Also, maybe separating his legs. You've heard Bob Holmes talking about he waits for that, just that right moment when you know, the legs are separate and maybe his hand is out. Maybe he's pointing at something, but something would go on there that kind of 
brought that punctuation point. I don't really think the car being a punctuation point is that interesting. So I'd get rid of the car. I'd maybe even wait for those cars to get out of the way. In fact, I would. Let's just skip the cars altogether. Let's go in on this guy. Come in tight. Follow him. See if you can get, you know, again, that magic point where there's a gesture going. And that would make that photograph really pop. Okay. Hope that helps. All right. Who's next? All right. Next, we've got, uh, uh, you know, active member of the community. We've got Brett uh, Hinderman, who does a lot of sports oh, photography. Yeah. So I picked one of his. Uh, this is from the adult rec league playing uh, from DC that was playing at his stadium. Uh, and so this was kind of when, you know, baseball games finally were starting to a degree. Bob, um, I, you know, it's square. Brett. Is that just because the, you cropped it that way or did you shoot it? And you can answer this in the chat. Did you shoot it as a square or was it two and a quarter uh, square or did you just crop it that way? Okay, this has got, I, I like the image a lot. It's got a lot of things going for it. Uh, you know, it's a sign of the times. It's what I was just talking about, you know, shooting the obvious right in front of us. In this case, it's it's your domain. And I like these guys um, to the right of him blurred out. That works to me because really it's a portrait with uh, with this kid with the bat. A kid. I don't know if he's a kid or not, but it's, you know, it makes it really interesting. So it was cropped. OK, cool. It works as a square. And, you know, with our masks on, we, it's, it's hard to really tell the details about people. Uh, you know, because we usually would look at that facial expression, but it's, hey, it's what's happening right now. I think this image works really well. Uh, you have, my focus is on him, and then secondarily, I see these guys, which adds to the story. Obviously, they're playing baseball. There's nobody in the bleachers. This is our modern world right now, kind of sad but true. Hey, it works, Bob. I don't have any any construct you know anything constructive to add to it. I think it's a a really great image. It works really well. So all right, that. our our next one. College he says age. that they are okay. college age. Cool. Um, so our next one is Daniel uh, Sawyer. I'm not sure exactly how to say that, but oh, wow. um, he says I don't consider myself a bird photographer, uh, but this is a fantastic subject. Uh, and it's, uh, he's been watching and photographing these birds, uh, uh, this particular family of birds since May or June. Wow. And so he says, this is a lesson on patience and perseverance. Uh, and he yes. would say that probably only one in four visits have yielded decent photos and capturing moments like this. So he chalks it up quite a bit to luck and patience. Well, I think patience is the key there, you know, and that's, really something with animal photography is waiting it out and you'll see we have a fantastic interview with Florian Schultz he's he's like amazing animal photographer and he made that point like you have to number one go back to the same location over and over and over again which sounds like you have done and then just wait for that magic moment okay so you have a punctuation point the bird is the punctuation point You've got diagonal lines, which adds vitality in the composition. And there's a kind of a mystery to me, like, where did, wh what's happening? Why is it landing like that? But, um, and I like it as a black and white. I didn't, you know, I mean, we could see a comparison as a color, but I think it works really well uh, as a black and white because it's got, you know, you, I don't know what the colors are in the bird. If it wasn't like really outstanding, I think just leave it as a black and white. But uh, that works really well. And I like the diagonal um, kind of like emphasizing the lines of the bird itself. So well done, it works. It's an osprey. Um, yeah, so you got to just wait. I would I would love to see some of your continuing images here and see what other ones you come up with. If you came up with one like it had something in its talons, 
that could be really amazing. You know, whether it was a rodent that had just picked up or a snake or something, that might be an interesting uh, addition to this. But it works really well. The, the thing that I, I think highlights it is that diagonal line of the, uh, the wood going into its nest and the fact that it's paralleling that. I think that's really cool. Awesome. Well done. Keep it up. All right. Uh, here's one from Daniel um, Moliner. So we've got another Daniel. Uh, Daniel. He says this is part of an ongoing project he's working on. Uh, uh, Brest la uh, Blanche. Uh, I, I'm guessing it's French. <laughs> and uh, okay. my French is not very good. Uh, but it's a street photography project documenting the city he lives in, and it focuses on the new upcoming generation. That is cool. I like this image. There's the geometry. You know, geometry is a magical thing. Um, and you've got, you've got all the geometry going on there, which is really cool. Then we got the three kids. Um, my... My only thing here is I would like to, again, see a focal point. Like, what what should I be looking at? I see the geometry. My eye is pretty much drawn there, and that's cool because it's leading. It's a leading line of geometric figures. But then I've got these three guys, and I don't know which one I should be focused on. So the only thing I would have recommended here is I would take the guy on the left and I would have gotten up close to him and crouched down low, which would have made him prominent in the frame. You know, with sports, if you want to emphasize the action, get low. That's the rule. That's why you'll see sports photographers crouch down. They get down on their knee because they want, they want to emphasize that action. So rather than having it be kind of a distant thing, I would try to position myself down low it's tricky because you didn't necessarily know these guys were coming along but you if you're anticipating it you could look the other way and say oh here's comes three kids on skateboards i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna fit, situate myself right over here you know and get down low so when this kid rides by boom and it would have also it would have made the the kid more prominent and also would have made the those geometric shapes more prominent. And we would have focused on one of them. Maybe the other guys could have been blurred in motion. You know, that's another thing you can do is get a show slow shutter speed. Actually, all possibly all three of them. I'm just, this is just spitballing. I'm just kind of off the top of my head. Some different things you, you might try on that. But again, I would like to see a focal point. So I'm my eye goes, okay, that one kid is really who I'm looking at. Does that make sense? Uh, it's really, it's really, really obviously important in telling a story to put the viewer's attention on the one thing you want them to get out of it. All right, keep it up. You, it, All again, right, if, we've got. If you can go uh, back to that same spot, wait for another kid to come by on a skateboard, which probably happens. Try it out again. All right. We've got a photo from Sati uh, Zaniel, um, and they it's their they primarily do nature photography, and I saw that they had a couple of photos like this where it was really tiny insects, amazing, uh, which is not something that we see super often uh, in the community. So I had to grab some of these because they're they're fascinating. That is really cool. Okay, I'm sorry, I skipped. Say the name again. I just want to announce who. Sati, I believe. Uh, you can correct me okay. in the comments if I'm if I'm wrong right. in the well, chat. Uh, okay, you did a great job. You um, you have your subject matter and the subject in the frame. You blurred the background, which keeps it clean. Um, that's very interesting. What is that creature? I mean, is it some kind of a wasp it looks like a wasp kind of a, a scary wasp you know i think you nailed it i i i you know my eye boom goes right to that it's in the center of the frame cool i mean we've already long since thrown out the rule of, the quote rule of thirds which there is no rule uh <laughs> so good job okay 
<laughs> All right, we've got a photo from a longtime fan, uh, Sandy. Okay. Oh, uh, Sandy, wow. Okay. Yeah, Sandy. and I just saw saw them in the chat. So, Dude, Sandy, you just nailed this, didn't you? You know what my first thought was? It's like Cartier-Bresson meets Bob Holmes. <laughs> not really. It's your own unique view. It's not a Bob Holmes photograph. Okay, this has got a lot of right... A really good things going for it again my eye boom right to the guy sitting that's makes it very clear what the story is you've got images within images which is a not always easy to pull off so you've got the guy that's one image you've got the the group of guys another set of images and then you've got the overall overarching you know, image with the frame of this uh, scene. You framed it really well. Uh, the 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 uh, clouds give us a, a you know sort of a simple backdrop. We're not. I I can see the texture of them, but I don't have to like dwell on it. But really, you got three photographs within one. Bravo! That's hard to pull off, and you did it. And the guys. What's really cool is the guys are framed between those two figures that are in that are blurred. So you had to wait for that to happen. You didn't just snap that shutter any old moment. You waited. And that's very commendable. Good job, Sandy. Uh, great photograph. What can I say? You did it. Keep All it right. Keep, uh, keep doing that. Here's one. This is from Amy Douglas, uh, and this one, I the like story this is, uh, this is from a series that the, uh, she posted. I took it in my yard, my husband explaining something to boys, and then the pond is on the road sign was hammered into our front lawn by our Amish neighbor's son. They were joking about the rain-filled potholes on the highway in front of our house. Wow. I love this photograph. It tells a story in one image. And that's that's really what we're trying to do as photographers. Tell a story with one photograph. It's like, you know, if we're shooting a movie, you could see, you know, okay, the person comes along, pounds the sign in, and then you, you go over to the potholes, and, you know, that's a movie. But you've got one frame here that tells that whole story. I have no idea. If I hadn't heard your little story, I had no idea what this meant. Watch out for ponds on the road. What does that even mean? But now I know. But uh, that's the center of attention is the sign. Uh, the background is blurred slightly, so I don't have to dwell on anything there. It's a little bit of a mystery, which is always good. Bob Holmes talks about leave something in your photograph that does like don't just tell the whole thing. Leave people asking questions. And he was talking about it by having uh, dark parts of your image which leaves you asking a question. But in this case, the sign leaves us asking a question. The trees are dark. That's kind of cool, you know. Well done. It works. It's an awesome photograph. Keep going. All right. Our next, our next one we've got is from Skip Weeks. Uh, Skip. They got this in Big Cottonwood Canyon in Utah. Wow. Uh, said it was one of the more difficult trails that they've had to hike uh, this year. And they gave some of the technical detail, F, F18, ISO 50, 35 millimeter, nice. uh, 1.3 second. And uh, So you had a nice slow shutter speed, which, which slowed down that water and get it, got it into a, a beautiful blur. The colors are kind of awesome. I mean, it's a remarkable, you know, the color of the stone, the blue of the water. That's, that's to me, like, you know, color is a composition tool. It's not just, and all these things I'm mentioning to you, by the way, are in my book. I don't have it over here. The Secrets to Amazing Photo Composition, 83 Compositional Techniques. I mentioned all these things. You've got diagonal lines. You've got the color. The color of the water is the feature of this photograph. It's the thing that my eye is drawn to. 
What I would love to see again is a punctuation point that says there's where your eye should go. And I'm not sure what the punctuation point is. I think it could be the uh, rocks up at, you know, so you have the big rock, the big triangular rock with all the water on it. And the ones above it seem to have light on them. And I might suggest somehow making those guys the center of attention. And that would just be moving around different, some different angles maybe, try that out, um, to somehow get a punctuation point. Or, or somebody crossing the water. Um, that could work. By the way, uh, you'll see in, in, like Mads Peter Iverson uses himself as a subject. And I don't do that. I'm going to start trying that. But he puts it on a self timer and goes up there and, and, you know, he would be crossing that little point in the stream, for instance. And listen, our eye is drawn to people. And I've mentioned this before. Um, Bob Holmes really rubbed, rubbed off on me this point about nature is fine, rocks are cool, but add a person to it and it makes it a whole different thing. And he said, and I, I went through this, we used to wait for people to get off the trail or out of the scene so that we just had a pure you know, landscape photograph. And now I do the opposite. I wait for a person to walk into the frame. So that would be my only thing. I think that would make it amazing if you were standing up there or your companion, you can always direct people. Don't ever be afraid to be a director. You know, it's not like you have to just take that image and go, well, that's all I got. You can absolutely direct somebody. Hey, would you mind walking up there and stand right on that rock there? And I'll just holler at you. And, oh, no, move over this way a little bit. Be a director. You know, there's active photography and there's passive. Let's skip the passive and get to the active. That'll be my only thing. I think it's, it, you know, it's an interesting image, but put a person in there. Put a punctuation point and bam, that thing would just, you knock it out of the park. Okay, who's next? All right, we've got a photo from Bob Ralph. I hope you guys uh, are enjoying and... this. I think this is fantastic. You guys are doing a great job here. Yeah. Bob! Uh, so this is this is part of a series that Bob has worked on. He's, he's talked about how he does several self-assigned project books yeah. with different guidelines, and one of them has been to follow the same person over an extended period of time. And so these are photos of his daughter-in-law. He spent a year capturing images in various locations. So uh, here's one of the photos from that series. Bob, excellent. Good job. Uh, I'll just point out the things that I like about it. The, I like the geometry surrounding her in this... Uh, it's not a it's not just a greenhouse i'm assuming it's also a i forget i'm blanking out on the name an atrium not an atrium but um uh yeah i know what you're talking what about what is it okay it begins with an a um place where you go in and look at plants not just grow them maybe it is just a hothouse anyway um you've done a good job because you've got her punctuation point is really i think the leg up there on the chair is punctuating it it's a gesture and she's you know contrasted so sharply because she's wearing black and the and the hothouse whatever it is the greenhouse conservatory thank you with the that's a good word for it. and professor plum in the <laughs> conservatory okay thank you rachel and we got to get to rachel here make sure we get rachel anyway yes the conservatory um She's leaning, she's got an angle to her, the rest of it's kind of straight up. Great uh, contrast in several ways, contrasting her, what she's wearing as dark against the white, her angle against the more, you know, the curves and the straight ups. Good job. Keep it up. Awesome. What can I say? All right. Next up, we've got uh, Mike. And this is an image that he took at his sister's wedding 
it was the first wedding that he's ever taken photos at. He didn't do it professionally, but uh, yeah. more casually. So we open the show with that, you know, that shot of Annie Leibovitz's parents renewing their wedding vows, and this is right on that, right on that point. Good job, you took a camera and you took that image, you you made that image. Um, it tells a little story. Uncle, I, either dad or uncle, I don't think it's he's old enough to be a grandfather, but I'm guessing an uncle. Maybe a grandfather, could be a younger grandfather. Well, it doesn't matter, but it's a male who obviously is warming their hearts. They've got a nice little smile, both of them. He's not telling something nasty about them. You know, you see these <laughs> movies like, um, I don't know if you've seen Four Weddings and a Funeral. It's kind of funny because they botch up. One of the speeches just absolutely botches up the whole thing. But anyway, he's doing a good job, not embarrassing them. I like the light, the curve of the light. It, this is a great image, and it's an everyday image. Bravo. Well done. We all need to do more like this. And it's framed really well because, you know, the framing, the lights kind of add to the frame. But he's a, he's in a prominent spot in the frame. My eye goes right to him. Then I go, oh, there's the couple behind him. And they're digging this. You know, they're enjoying this thing. So you did a great job of isolating out of what could have been a really random shot with, like, let's say you hadn't just framed it that way and we just sort of see all these other people, it would have lost its point of impact. So you did a great job of finding that point of impact and keeping it there. Dream wedding. Yeah, well done. Who's next? All right, uh, here is Rachel's photo Rachel. that she sent. Ooh. Uh, so this one's from the Columbia River George, uh, Gorge. Gorge, uh, early morning. The River Gorge. Yes, that's great. Okay, you got your sunburst. Did you shoot that at F-22 like we've told people to? It looks like it probably was. Um, there's my eye going right to that sunburst. And we have a lot of geometry in this image. We've got the curve of the stairs. We have geometry behind the whatever that railing is. There's a lot of geometry going on there. So this works really well. It's, it's a black and white. My eye is led. So obviously the very first thing. Good, you shot at F22. Good for you. And that gives you that nice, clean sunburst. You know what's terrible about an iPhone? You'll never get a good sunburst. You guys notice that? It's so disappointing. You've got to have a camera that you can stop down to F22. And she did that. So black and white works really well. Um, diagonal line of the clouds. Nicely joining and kind of leading our eye towards the sunburst because it's kind of got those two little branches there. And then the eye, our eye is all going in the same direction, which is really a good thing here. So we're leading, the, the curve of the stairs is leading towards the center, which is going towards, you know, where the river gorge or whatever it is. So everything is, and then this diagonal line is also pointing, everything's pointing in the right direction. Well done, Rachel, it all works. All right, we've got a couple that have been submitted by people who are in the stream that recently. In the stream. Uh, yep, and they've they've submitted them, and I've downloaded them now. So we've got one from uh, Sarah Goyle. Uh, I'm once again sorry about any pronunciation issues, but here's Sarah. his photo. All right, Sarah. Okay, <clears throat> is this uh, is this in Curacao or is that in um, in Holland? Anyway, let us know where you took this. Um, Curacao is a Dutch island, and I've I've been there many times, and I've seen these uh, these how these buildings. So okay, this has some really good things working for it. One is the framing. So you've got the uprights of the houses or the buildings, framing it very nicely. Um, 
And the color is, is a dominant part of this. Again, that's a compositional tool. The, you know, the orange of the roof and the colors within the, um, you know, the, the side of the, of the buildings. Okay, again, I'm going to give you the same comment that I gave some of the other ones. I don't know where my eye should go. There needs to be a point of punctuation. Now I see it. Now that I see it, I see where, where the punctuation is, the guy with the tuba. But unfortunately, he's lost. You, you would need to pull up closer to this guy because he's the obvious point where, wow, that's kind of cool. So go ahead. Your best friends are your feet as a photographer. Zoom in on this guy with your feet. Walk up close to him. I would get down low. So again, he's prominent in the frame. But you could stay you could stay far away from him. You don't have to like get into a close up with him. But I would avoid the people on the right cuz they're just scattering my attention. So you've almost got it. In fact, you could crop this. You could crop it off on the right. Um if I were going to leave those people in the frame, I would do what Sandy did and leave them He's still, so I would uh, use a long shutter speed, a slow shutter speed, let them move, be them, be them, let them be blurred, let him be still. Boom, you got it. You, you could cheat on this one. You could, if you wanted, you could cheat in Photoshop and you could crop off the right, and you could blur those people in Photoshop. I'm not saying you can't do that. Why not? Blur those people on the right. Come in tighter on him. Try it. Just try it for fun, okay? You could do it in Lightroom also if, you, if you're not a Photoshop user. Just mask the people on the right and unsharpen them and also reduce the clarity, which will blur them, make them blurry and leave your tuba guy, I would enhance the tuba guy. You, oh. Why not? Why not play around with that in, in Lightroom or Photoshop? And will you do that and try it and bring it back to us? Do you, you get what I'm saying? Also, this stuff on the right, I would just get rid of all that. I, I, don't, I don't need that edge there at all. It just doesn't, it's not important. Just get rid of that edge. That'll tighten up the guy and the tuba and then blur those people and let's see what happens. So give it a shot. Okay. All right. Well, I accidentally uh, brought it up a little early, but here is one from Enrique. Okay, Enrique. We're going to probably and wrap it up part, here in a second. Is, yeah, this is part of a series. It looks like he took them at a junkyard or something. There's uh, Forrest Gump. Okay. Uh, Enrique. Okay, so I like the... Um, you know, you've got some interesting forms in here. I, I, I'm seeing stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff here. Um, it's kind of interesting. Like, I don't know what this stuff is. It's kind of a mystery. I like, I like this guy in the background. I'm not sure what, what that is. Um, I don't know where my eye should go, though. That's my only thing. I just don't know what I'm supposed to focus on. Because there's so many things going on here. Uh, give me a point of concentration give me a point of interest i would choose the guy i think that if you got down low lower and made him the point of interest bring his face in you know so so squat down a little bit let's see the guy let's blur all this other stuff let's let's use a shallow depth of field we can see, and that would kind of lead our eye towards this guy, but he's my point of interest. I think he's going to be your most, in this image, the most interesting point of image uh, of concentration. That would be my critique. Center your attention. Kind of the theme for today. Let's do one more and I'll do a little summary. How's that? Okay, uh, I saw that they had just commented, so this one is from uh, Fanny. Fanny. Uh, wow, Cord Cordade, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce the last name, but Fanny. Uh, and so that'll be our one that we end off on. Effing great. I mean, wow, that is a home run. 
I, I love that image. You, you know how you can tell somebody has created a great image? You get a little jealous. Like, why didn't I take that? So you have done a remarkable job. You got down, you've got your, your subject clearly framed. The reflection, the cigarette just makes it a home run. The subject is looking off, not at you. The background is blurred. The colors are awesome. It's, it's I'm assuming, late in the afternoon. So you've got the golden hour color in the background. That's a home run. Okay. I, I'm wondering, uh, since you're in the comments, if, if you could put this in the chat, are you in the water? Uh, and once again, that yeah, makes me think of question. Bob and Andrea talked about it recently, how, you know, you got to have like your clothing and, and be ready that's to get right. dirty, uh, or in this case, very wet, uh, if that's in fact what you did. Uh, it makes I'm me think guessing not, only because the ripple, the water is absolutely untouched. And that's you know true. what's interesting is, I just noticed this, there's kind of a ring, so that means that he's just moved and created that. There's a, again, that's just a whole nother layer to this. This is a really... This is an awesome image. You did a great job. And yeah. um, and just a note for, I saw a couple mentions in the chat of people thinking it was too late to submit. I will, okay, Fanny says that, yes, they were in the water. You were in the so, water. Where was this taken, Fanny? I'm just curious. Yeah, and just, while we wait for a response on that, it is not too late, in fact, to submit your photos. It's too late for this episode, but this is such a... Uh, you know, huge success, I think, that we're definitely going to have to do this again. So keep submitting your photos. I'll keep them on record. Uh, and even if you had your photo critiqued already, uh, we'll probably circle back around to you uh, at some point. But keep submitting your photos. You know, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, so the cigarette, I you know, that just adds that whole attitude, moodiness. It it feels like you know chris burkhardt made this point of try to capture images that could be almost any time this could be the 50s you know when everybody was smoking like smoking was was <laughs> cool i mean not uh, this guy's you know in today's world it isn't as cool as it was in the 50s, but it could be timeless it's a really a timeless image and it's in the french countryside bravo Really a good job. Okay, you guys, I love your work. I love what you've done. Uh, I hope my comments have been constructive to you. Everybody did a good job. You know why? Because you submitted your work. You put it out there. You shared it. And I, I hope those points where I mentioned what you could do, take it as, as advice. You can throw it out the window if you don't agree with me that's always something you should do as a photographer but if you agreed with what i said please try to go back and and uh, follow up you know go back to that same spot if you can and and try those things i pointed out because i'd like to see what happened and that'll be a cool thing in our ayp club Thank you, guys. I really love you. I love your work, and I love that you're part of this community, and I love that we're building the AYP community because this is what it's all about, and this is how we can help each other. In your critiquing, do what I just did, okay? Point out you know, the, the strongest thing that you see about it, and if you do feel something needs improvement, just point it out what it is. Don't hold back. Don't beat around the bush. Just say it, you know, this is, I don't know where my eye goes. If that's what you, what happens to you, fine, say it, you know, because <laughs> that will teach, that will help the person get feedback. Remember the fifth part, photography has five parts to it. And the last part is sharing your work. And one of the things that happens when you share it is you get feedback. You get to see what happened when you put your work out there. And that's really important. Okay, guys, listen. I'm leaving on a road trip. 
Uh, Jan and I are hitting the road Tuesday morning. We're going off to Montana. And I'm going to try to do some YouTube lives on the road. I don't see any reason why I shouldn't. Uh, we're not going to be doing this kind of stuff for a couple of weeks. But when I come back, I think this was a real success. We're going to do this. Definitely. maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll just pick a day, Jared. Like we have our news day and maybe we'll just have our critique day. Um, and I, one of the things I like about it is I really want to spend more time with you guys in the AYP club. And I think this is a good way to do that. So we'll find a good time that, uh, you know, is our critique day. Uh, meanwhile, what else is going on? I don't want to pass over. Jared, bring up the... Um, Bring up the AYP ambassador link. I want to keep pounding the oh, drum on yeah. this. Uh, I want more people involved as ambassadors. I want you guys to feel like you have a place and a cause. Bring that up, Jared, in that screen if you uh, would. I'm working on bringing that up. Um, I love to have you guys part of that. You mentioned in your surveys that you want to be part of it. Please grab what we call a hat. A hat is something you do, not just that you wear or in your head, but it, I, you know, grab something like um, you want to do some editing for us. You want to write a blog post. You want to do some um, ambassadoring by getting your stories out, whatever it is, put the link in the chat there. Please grab a hold of that. This is cool. We're building something, you guys, and I want you to envision this being an international community of artists who are really, really advancing and helping each other. Okay. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. We've got a lot of stuff happening. I'm going to start giving away my book really soon. We're trying to finish that up today. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for a road trip with Mark. Uh, stay tuned for a new whole new series of stuff come October. I don't know what it is yet. One of the reasons I love to go out on trips is I get new ideas. When I first launched AYP, I was in South Africa. And uh, <laughs> quick story, I, I got an incredible sponsorship. This was in 2008, an incredible dream sponsorship from a very big company. And it all fell apart because the economy took a huge nosedive. And I was out um, photographing the wild animals in South Africa. And I thought, F it, <laughs> I'm just gonna do it myself. And I did, and that's how AYP came to be. I always get these ideas when I go out on the road, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, you guys, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Uh, leave your comments in the video. I try to answer every one of them if I can. Please keep active in AYP. Keep posting your stuff for your critiques within the community itself. Um, share videos, share, you know, share, like, do all that good stuff. And say this with me, okay, wherever you are in the world, I want to hear it from all over the world. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome. And I want to see your follow-up work. Okay. Take care.